Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing MMORPG Tycoon 2. This is a game where you make a game with inside of a game. The game's developers, of course, intend for you to use the tools given to you to make a wonderful MMORPG game for your paying customers to enjoy. I, however, prefer to not play by the books, and today we're going to be doing something very entertaining indeed. We're going to be creating a game without any gameplay at all, and yet it's still going to be one of the greatest games of all time time and make millions of pounds. So let's begin and make a brand new game. Now of course all good scams need a name, so our MMO today is going to be Spiftropolis. And as far as focus on the game goes, it's going to be a social type game, which is exactly what we want to see. We're then going to want to spend all of our unallocated points pretty much exclusively into advertising, and now we should be ready to launch the wonderful game of Spiftropolis, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be perfectly balanced indeed. So make sure you're sat back, relaxed with a nice warm cup of tea in hand, and if you're feeling like an especially majestic sausage today, you can even like the video. This is Spiftropolis. Oh, look at it. It's a beautiful little world. Oh, it's glorious and wonderful, and I love it. Now, the game for us today is going to be relatively simple. We want to get ourselves set up with a nice large starting zone, and then expand out our game world from there. I very much like the look of this starting region, so this is exactly where we're going to plonk down the beginnings of our glorious empire. Now effectively we, as the overlord of this game, get to buy region, set the levels of the region and build the region up. The developers want us to of course place down areas in which monsters will spawn. I don't know, build say an area where skeletons can spawn. Lovely stuff. Look at all of those fun little skeletons. And then players would naturally spawn in and fight those skeletons for loot or fight them in order to complete quests. In our case however, uh, we don't want any skeletons. This is a game without gameplay, which means we can't have have fun gameplay mechanics like, you know, combat, it has to be the first boredom-like game. Now naturally we need to get a few key buildings down, namely respawn points for people to spawn in when they die, and then we also need to place down some inns where people can set their spawn points. Now immediately as we've completed those objectives, we've unlocked the starting point, which is where we're going to be able to plonk down the beginnings of our glorious empire and have new fresh players spawn in, but I, like an astute business person, know that I need to build up my world first. This is going to be the ultimate gameplayless world, which means it needs to at least look a little bit decent. Six and a half hours later. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Spiftropolis. I've actually completed pretty much everything I wanted to do at the start. I've built this one lovely starting town. Uh, this town is large and it has a huge amount of space for people to stay in inns, which is uh, actually critically important for us, as we're going to be having a lot of players and they all need a place to stay. Next up, we actually need for them to have some games play to actually do and uh, the best way to do that is to have quest givers now quest givers are lovely we place them down in the world and they come up with some quests now if we were to have say a combat area they would assign quests to be like hey go slay five wolves but because we do not bright the wise here only has two quests which are uh, bring me my shoes which basically means go to this tavern and back and then uh, search for my watch which means go to this building over here and see if he has a watch over there now what we can do is we can actually crank up the amount of quests he has up to five which is fantastic and this means bright here now offers five lovely fun quests for people to do so that's brilliant that's one quest giver done next up we want to offer another quest giver let's make him say a wizard we'll plonk him down over here next to the potion shop now loudly alter here also has some quests to give but because i've given him five quests you'll notice that he's offering 200 experience out of the 400 experience necessary to hit level two we have one minor problem we only have a level one region and we will only be giving out level 1 quests. And I would argue that actually leveling up is a form of gameplay, so consequently we don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the gameplay design here and alter how many quests needed to level up and uh, just crank it up to 100,000. So we're bam. Now Bright the Wise here offers 5 quests that you can complete and make gold from, however, because you now need 100,000 quests in order to actually level up, every single quest provides 0 experience experience. This means that it is scientifically impossible to level up, however, because the game believes that it is 
still viable after 100,000 quests, the players running around the game will still do their best to level up. Anyway, I need to just place down as many quest givers as possible because my quest givers here, ladies and gentlemen, they're providing the content. Right, now we should be ready to actually begin with the start of our game and uh, in order to do that, we're going to need to place down the actual starting point. That's right, this is where all of our new players are going to get summoned into this lovely world. So we're bam, let us put down this lovely magical looking starting point and this is it ladies and gentlemen as soon as this is placed effectively the game begins although before a game begins remember it's critically important to have advertising advertising is like you know the actual game but more important so bam let's get this place down and let's spiff tropolis begin ladies and gentlemen i can't wait to see what our new players are going to look like but yes this is going to be our glorious little world here it is from the developers of all of your favorite videos and a maniacal tea drinking British bastard, I present to you a game without gameplay. A game where all of the quest givers are giving you fetch quests where you just go and look for something. There is nothing to do except look at the world. It's wholly original, wholly brilliant, and a wholly good idea for my bank account. Ah, Spifftropolis, our first player is about to enter into the world. Oh, I'm so excited. Come on, my friend. Welcome, welcome, my friend. Here we are. Naxon and Sham have arrived. Each of them have uh, paid £40 to actually buy this game. That's right, we are currently charging £40 to purchase this game and then £10 a month for subscription. Now, of course, that's an okay price. Uh, we're going to be cranking it up a bit, though. So, yes, lots of new players entering into the world, starting to take their first quest. Here we go. Bright the Wise has just bestowed a quest to Trix here, whose job is to um, find his shoes. Trix has no money, so this is actually going to be his first way to get money. So, wabam, off he goes. He goes over to uh, the tavern and he's going to find the shoes he's ready to turn that quest in fantastic he has turned in the quest which means he has been granted 10 gold which is lovely stuff he can go and spend that 10 gold on something now it used to be a case in this game that it was pretty much impossible to have a game without any combat and this is for a few key reasons the players playing the game here have critical needs they have a desire to advance they have a desire to get loot they have a desire to look at good scenery and they have a desire to be sociable when it comes to getting loot the only way to do it was to kill monsters and when it came to advancing, the only way to do it was to do quests. However, if you make all of the quests fetch quests, then they feel like they're advancing despite the fact that they're actually being given zero experience whatsoever. At the same time, you can fulfill the get loot requirement by having these uh, lovely little trinket carts, which we can charge one pound of real world money for. These trinket carts are effectively in-game microtransactions. And as you can see, Frost here is buying himself a little trinket, which is going to cost him a little bit of money. Which for us is very very good indeed. Effectively we're selling them a completely useless NFT here. It does nothing other than make you happy until you eventually realize that you've been scammed and the thing that you've purchased has no real value beyond distracting you from the crushing inevitable heat death of the universe. Anyway I think this world could use a little bit of nice new scenery. Some cute little trees or something might go a long way. Let me just get some small trees lining the pathway. So bam with some fresh new trees purchased we should be seeing that people actually are uh, really like this town yep they love the look of this town and they like the scenery which is very good that's what we want to see we want to see a lot of happy people because they're going around the world and the world looks good so era here uh they're a player they are very happy their desire to advance and be sociable has been massively increased the only thing they're lacking is scenery which will be fixed by um, just the sheer proximity of these trees so yes we're up to 64 players and that's very very good indeed effectively what we want is we want the game score to be very high we want the overall happiness to be nice and chonky and then once we do that after a few days we're going to uh begin some shenanigans so to speak so now that we have a little bit more money because our game's been selling well i'm going to get a few more npcs down and uh make sure that they have a copious quantity of quests to provide lovely stuff all of this fake progress that we're offering is exactly what we want to see and here we go fantastic we're up to 188 total paying subscribers our players are looking very very happy indeed standing around in circles having chats, going off and doing fun little quests. We've actually got a very decent quantity of quests now, just due to the amount of NPCs we have lying around. Now you might be thinking, Smith, well, how do you actually level up and unlock new features in the game? Well, it's very simple. You basically just need to place down a hundred scenery items. Now, that can of course be done by placing down a hundred very expensive buildings that cost a thousand pounds each, or alternatively it can be done by uh, scaling down tiny plants and then just uh, spam placing them. So yes, we can just fill out this field of wheat very affordably 
by using an auto clicker and uh, we bam we can upgrade ourselves let us upgrade our ability to advertise and make it more effective yes yes more hype marketing so we bam we're actually on to version 4.0 of the game now just because i cranked out that uh field of wheat which is perfect people love a good field of wheat right the game's rating is now up to a very decent 4.2 which makes it quite a highly rated mmo it's 600 out of 1000 mmos so we're going to slightly increase the price we're just going to crank it up to 50 nothing too high but we just need to be making a little bit more money and seeing as we're getting a whole bunch of new players in uh that should be fine it's our first day of mmoing and we have 700 players so that's pretty decent indeed all right i'll be back as soon as day two begins and we have a whole bunch of streamer events start whereby hopefully that will increase the hype of the game oh my goodness fantastic okay day two begins we managed to get up to 832 subscribers but two events have happened namely number one a popular streamer has connected which is very very good indeed and uh we won an award we won an award for the best quests that's right ladies and gentlemen we literally opened this mmo yesterday and we've already won an award for having the best quests in the entire known universe what are the quests they are entirely go from point a to point b go back to point a then go to point c then go back to point a and repeat ad infinum and yet that is apparently a groundbreaking revolutionary new gameplay design oh my goodness ea uh, i hope you're not watching this video don't try this don't do it uh, just because it works for me god it's gonna work for them isn't it anyway let's go find this uh streamer and see how they're enjoying the game they're having a decent time they want some uh, social engagement which is immediately capped out by just meeting a handful of people now they want to uh, get loot so um logically they just need to do some quests go do some quest kitten games there you go you're picking up so many different quests wow i'm noticing that for a streamer kitten games only has 163 pounds in the bank balance so um uh i mean geez just take a few raid shadow legends deals what's going on anyway they are now addicted you will notice because they've just handed in several quests and that was enough to uh fulfill the get loot desire now let's go check out kitten purple to see how this vip is doing how much money you've got you've got five thousand pounds much better all right let's follow you around and see what you get up to you're going to grab some quests you're thinking you need to go bring some shoes and get some beer and then search for a letter lovely everyone's favorite bring shoes quest anyway our first stream was disconnected kitten games logged out that's fine but they had a grand old time and their satisfaction level was five which means we will get a predicted 500 additional subscribers which is almost doubling the quantity of subscribers we have immediately i'm going to take this opportunity to increase the price of the game because well um it's brilliant isn't it we're going to increase the cost of the game up to 60 pounds there we go triple a game price now ladies and gentlemen there we go and kitten purple here has also bought themselves a new weapon which is brilliant as that has now meant that they are addicted they are willing to completely unlock their bank balance ladies and gentlemen which means we're able to do some you know relatively cheeky things like pop on down the uh, trinket microtransaction cart and make this one cost you know 10 real world pounds this one is going to sell uh nfts that's right a uh, brilliant new revolutionary product that i've come up with uh which is basically non-existent and just pure scum uh it does nothing it adds nothing to the world but hey don't you just really want to get yourself one of those oh yes a couple of our players do i mean who wouldn't want to get themselves an nft so far we've sold five nfts which is brilliant i mean it's just an absolute scam but hey uh, i mean if it works it works right now the average happiness of the game is up to 4.6 which is very very good indeed all of our players are still at level one but hey that doesn't matter and the online buzz for our game is very good now i'm immediately going to increase the price of the game again up to 100 pounds uh, i would actually like to push it even further i would like to go up to you know 200 pounds let's see if anyone is willing to buy the game for 200 pounds i would imagine uh, there is a chance and yes they are wow and here uh just bought the game for 100 pounds which is very 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 good indeed lifetime spent so far 200 pounds and look there's another okay right 200 pounds is a good price for the game plus these people that spent so much money to buy the game yes they've got healthy bank balances oh they've got healthy bank balances that would love to have some microtransactions okay right with a lot of people still spawning in uh, i would imagine that this is a brilliant time then to raise the price even higher we're going to go from 200 pounds to 1000 pounds it's a big jump i know but if people are willing to buy this game for a thousand pounds per copy then um we've made it ladies and gentlemen we've made it come on please someone buy the game someone buy the game someone buy the game you know you want to the advertisement's great yes people bought the game imala here yes you've got eighteen thousand pounds in your bank account did you spend a grand of it on this game oh you silly fool you silly fool imagine spending look at them people are buying the game oh my goodness 
is imagine spending a thousand pounds trying to get yourself a new game and the game has, you know, only NPC quest givers and that's it. That's the entire game. Wow, yes, this is it. This is perfect, ladies and gentlemen. This is brilliant. It is everything I wanted and more. Also, because I don't want this area to get too congested with players, I've built this new coastal region where we can actually put down a brand new starting point. This allows to kind of like diversify where new players are spawning in, which allows us to balance out the player location, which will lower the strain that we might face on any of our servers. As long as we've got enough quest givers lying around, everyone will be happy. Now, because we're selling the game for a thousand pounds a copy, as you can see, we've sold about another 134 copies, which means we've got 134,000 pounds in the bank, which is absurdly good. And uh, how's the rating for our game? 4.6. It's still brilliant. This is uh, still a fantastic game. Online buzz for it is very high. Let's see what some of the reports are. Uh, the scenery here is really nice. I like this town. Oh, this is fantastic news for us. Brilliant stuff indeed. And now if we take a moment to pause and look at our finance graph, you can see on day three where we implemented our brand new £1,000 purchase price was a very brilliant day indeed. For our cash in hand, uh, yeeted its way into the sky is the only way I can describe this. At the same time, I think it's time we raise the price of the game yet again. We're going to go up to £1,500. You know what? Let's do away with the monthly subscription fee pretty much entirely and just lower it to £1. So there is no longer a game subscription fee. However, any new players that spawn in, like Imsodge here, uh, they had to pay £1,500 to play this game. For this, a square with fetch quests. <laughs> Even Star Citizen has more gameplay than this. You could move around in a vehicle in Star Citizen. Okay, we're on day four of our game releasing and we're up to about £666,000 generated. And I've just finished adding in our third little settlement to the game. This is going to be a nice, fun, little, elegant coastal city looking off into the beautiful Beautiful distant harbor is my plan. Also, we had our streamer connect. Here we go. We've got Naxon has joined in. Naxon is currently on a quest and they are buying themselves a trinket. Lovely stuff. That, of course, will cost the money for that as a microtransaction. Anyway, Naxon is having a grand old time. Five happiness at the moment because, well, uh, this is the best game in the known universe. It looks beautiful perpetually. I must say, I do love the fact that even players who've, you know, spent seven hours in the game have um, got zero experience and yet they feel immensely fulfilled. There you go, maxed out happiness. They are the most happy being in the known universe. Oh, and I'll tell you what else we can do. Uh, we can actually create new classes for people to play. That's right. We can unlock new evil monsters. Brilliant. But most importantly, a brand new class. The warrior has been unlocked. Yes. And sure, we could customize the abilities so that, you know, when they reach level two, they can uh, do an instant warrior basic attack. However, there's no point because, well, um, they're never going to reach that level, are they? What I will do is I will actually expand our game world. Go to buy a plot of land on the mainland. And this is going to allow us to have boats sail from one port to the next. Now I just need to make sure that I have enough infrastructure over here for when inevitably a thousand bajillion new players wander on over. Oh my goodness, I won an award. I won an award. What's this? Best visuals. Yes, there we go. Let's upgrade the game once more. I mean, I've completely missed the fact that we're now at 1.5 million. I've just been working on this entirely new, expansive, fun area that I haven't even built yet. But hey, look, the game's going great. We've got three thousand paying subscribers. What are the uh, reports and feelings? Scenery is really nice. I like this town. There we go. Let's take a look at where the scenery is nice. Oh, the scenery is nice pretty much everywhere. Oh, I'm just that good. All right, I've built pretty much an entirely brand new region over here and flooded it with uh, quest NPCs. So I actually feel happy to uh, put in a brand new spawn point over here. An entirely new region unlocked, ready for players to adventure around in. Yep, it seems perfect to me. Yes, more fresh players are going to be yeeted out into the world here and be able to go on new journeys and spread out the love and fun. Oh my goodness, look at how many players there are. Jeez. And you know what? Because I think this game is so good, I'm willing to lower the price of it because, I mean, at the end of the day, I have 1.7 million pounds, ladies and gentlemen. I've already completed wealth. I have so much money. I could do whatever I like with it. But the reason I want to lower the price is because it's going to overwhelm the game. We're going to get a giant influx of new players, which is exactly what we want. We want as many new players as possible. And then that will create a huge amount of buzz. But Spiff, that's not evil of you, but it is. For you see, the more players we have, the more time of people's lives we waste. Look at these new players here. They've only been playing for 38 minutes, but in that 38 minutes, they've not been able to contribute to society, and they are a drain on humanity's existence. That is exactly what we want to encourage. So, wabam, I'm going to temporarily lower the entry fee of the 
game to £20. Ladies and gentlemen, away we go. What could possibly go wrong? We should see a massive new influx of players heading into the world. So bam, yes, we are up to 3,500 subscribers now, more and more people entering the game. Happiness, 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 lovely stuff. My hope is that this will create a huge amount of buzz around the game as we get more and more free players. And let us see some player reports. What do they think of this new area that I've created? Ah, oh, they really like the scenery here. They like this town. Lovely stuff indeed. Oh, this is going fantastically well. We're at 4.5 thousand players and look at them. They are just everywhere having a grand old time and the game is functioning. It is functioning as we intended. Okay, kind of. It's, it's functional and that's good enough for me. All right, we are now up to 5,000 subscribers. Lovely stuff. This should be cranking our way through the uh, MMO ratings list. We've got a huge amount of positive buzz from our game and I think we should uh, crank up the uh, sales of the game again. Back up to a nice normal £100. There we go. We've had a period of growth. I'm just gonna actually go AFK and let the game run. I want to see what happens. See where we are after several months of this glorious progress. Well, our game has done fantastically, ladies and gentlemen. We've crossed the 10,000 subscriber mark threshold, which means we've pretty much unlocked every single possible aspect the game has to offer. We've unlocked all of the player classes. We've almost unlocked all of the monsters. We've unlocked all of the NPCs. There we go. We can now add a cat and a werewolf call. Yep, that looks about valid. Uh, and yes, the game is doing fantastically. People love it. Rated 4.7 out of sheer happiness. Continuous happy online buzz around it. And we also have three of the amazing awards. We have best visuals, best staff, and best quests because, I mean, uh, we've got a lot of quests, so I guess that counts as having the best quests. Well, nonetheless, we are making a copious amount of money and not least because of these uh, wonderful little trinket stands. They're now selling trinkets for real-world money, which, as you can imagine... Uh, uh, makes us a lot of cash indeed. We have around about 2,000 microtransactions per day, making us £4,900 per day, which is uh, very jazzy indeed. Yes, our world is doing gloriously. You know what? I want to push for version 10. Let's go. I think this is it. Let's go for version 10. All right, our advertising boost is up to plus 60%, which is absurdly good. I think we were getting something like 4,400 subscribers just for appearing at a video game expo, which is uh, very good by this game's standards, and we are very close now. The only thing holding us back is the fact that the game's engine is uh, struggling to deal with what I'm doing to it. That's okay. It doesn't have to live past this point. It's doing its little best. Just live and last a little bit longer, game engine. I believe in you. And wabam, another upgrade. This is a huge upgrade that takes us right up to version 10. That's right, version 10 is here. We've done it, ladies and gentlemen. A huge milestone for our game. I mean, I say huge. We are filthy rich and absolutely rolling in it. God, I love the game I've created. It is just brilliant. It is so absurdly silly, yet it is just viable. It's completely viable. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The lovely Spiftropolis scam game is pretty much complete, in my opinion. We've done it. We've built a giant game with 10,000 monthly paying subscribers who pretty much all paid £1,000 to play this game. And we still have fresh meat continuously arriving every single day, adding their lovely money into my pile. I mean, just look at the finance. Look at this finance. This is beautiful. This is absurd. This is wonderful. We're making so much money each day. We're on version 10, which is wonderful. We have so many fun people playing fun quests endlessly and not realizing that actually they haven't even played a game yet. Best of all, we don't even throw in the fake illusion of choice, like say the Telltale game series. Nope, nope, nope. We get that all out of the window. There is no choice. There is no path. There is no story. There is just fetch quest. Only fetch quest. Anyway, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I have been the Spiffing Brit. This has been MMORPG Tycoon 2. And this has been the glorious, the wonderful Spifftropolis. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to give it a like and hop on down into the comment section and tell me what game you'd like to see perfectly balanced next. As we know, every single game is completely and utterly exploitable and has absolutely no glitches at all. Trust me. But if they do exist, oh, I will find them. I will. As always, a Massive thank you to each and every one of our amazing YouTube members and patrons whose generous funding massively supports the channel. Thank you very, very much. And hey, if you're sat there wondering what to watch next, look no further than this video on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day and goodbye for now.